Okay, so question one, you're trying to figure out which one is cheaper. So this cost is in kilograms and then this one is in pounds. So we just have to decide, are we gonna do everything with pounds or everything with kilograms? So I'm gonna do everything with pounds. Okay, so this is one kilogram, okay? So instead of having one kilogram, I'm gonna change that to 2.2 pounds. Okay, so one kilogram is 2.2 pounds, so I'm gonna replace it, which means this is gonna turn into how many dollars per one pound? So that's a uh, unit rate in pounds. Okay, so every time I set up one of these, it ends up being times divide So $11.61 per pound versus this one. So that one is already per pound. So therefore, this one is cheaper. Okay, so actually on your test, I feel like I put one of these button, it's like, $25.55 for three kilograms. I might do something like that. Then you have to convert the kilograms to pounds first or vice versa. Okay, two races from different towns, two people race from different towns to see who's faster. I think this is supposed to be racers, but here we go. The first racer reported that she ran five kilometers in 38 minutes. And the second one went three miles in 0.4 hours. Okay, so when we compare this, it's all not good. We, we have a kilometer and a mile, and we have a minute and an hour. We have nothing the same. So we have to make everything the same. So what do you want to do here? Do you want to make everything in kilometers, everything in miles? And it doesn't matter. You just have to be the same. So let's go everything in kilometers. So we'll leave that. Three miles we got to turn into kilometers. So three miles equals how many kilometers? When it was t given that one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. So how many um, kilometers is that? Okay, so you're gonna times that. Okay, on the bottom, I have a minute, and then this, I have an hour, so we gotta change them into the same thing. So what do you wanna change them into? And I feel like I would like everything to be in minutes, if that works. So how do you change this to minutes? So if you wanted to, you can always do a ratio. So 0.4 equals how many minutes? when you know what, and I did not give you this conversion because I hope that you know it. One hour equals 60 minutes. So 0.4 times 60 is 24 minutes. Okay, 
So who is faster? Okay, so if I divide this, how many kilometers per one minute? Or we actually, you know what, we could have done one kilometer per how many minutes if you wanted to do that too. Doesn't matter because you just have to compare. So, okay, so five divided by 38. I'm getting 0.13 kilometers per minute. And on this one, how many kilometers per one minute? So times divide. And on here, I'm getting 0 0.20 kilometers per minute. Okay, so this was all about getting everything into the same. So everything with kilometers and miles has to be the same. Whatever you pick, it has to be the same. So then this racer was faster. Okay, number three. It's a chart and it shows a plane starting to land, so it's descending. At what interval is the plane descending the fastest? So just if you look at this, what do your eyes say? Which spot is the fastest? The first, the second, or the third interval? So the third would be the fastest, and the reason is it's the steepest line. Okay, it's, it's line, right? So if you go steeper, it means you're going faster. What's going on during this second interval from B to C? This line is flat, meaning what's going on? It means there's no more descending, so the plane is leveled off. Determine the rate from A to B. Okay, well, first of all, to determine a rate, I should have given you some kind of uh, units here. What should I do here? Five minutes. So we'll go minutes. We'll do five minute intervals. Does so anybody know what height a plane is usually flying at? I don't even know. Anybody know? We'll just go like 500 feet. So I went up by 500 feet. Okay, so what is the rate from A to B? So how many feet did it drop? So it dropped 500 feet. So it went from 2,500 to 2,000. So it dropped 500 feet over a matter of, so from zero to 15. So 15 minutes. So how many feet per minute is it dropping? So 
33.33 feet per one minute. Okay, you know that you can type 36 words per minute and your teacher gives you the rest of the class to type and you're trying to get a thousand word essay. Are you going to make it? Okay, so 36 words equals one minute. How many words will I be able to type in 41 minutes and 20 seconds? Okay, how do I change that piece just to minutes? So it's going to be 41 point something. Okay, it's not 0.2 because 20 seconds is not 20 hundredths, right? So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take 20 and divide it by 60. Okay, so that's how I'm converting it. So it's 0.333, so 0.33 minutes. Okay, does that make sense? Don't do a point two because it's not something that's out of a hundred. 20 seconds out of the 60 seconds in a minute. Okay, now take that. So if you can type that many words per one minute, how many words can you do in 41? 0.33. So you're going to be able to type that many words. So are you going to make it? Yep, you're going to be able to finish your thousand word essay within the class. Okay. When we do scales, we always are going to do this way, so diagram to the real. So every one on the diagram is going to be how many on the real, or the other way around, depends if it's enlarging. Okay, so... This is in millimeters and this is in centimeters. So that's not what I want. I want them in the same. So should we change this to centimeters or should we change this to millimeters would be my question. And I think I'm gonna change this to millimeters. Okay, and I gave you a fancy conversion sheet. So this would be there if you need to look. So one centimeter you have 10 millimeters. So I'm gonna times this by 10. So 29.25 millimeters. Okay, so the thickness of the coin and then this was the diagram so it has to go 29.25 diagram to 1.95 on the reel. Okay, whichever one is smaller, you're going to change to one. 
So I'm going to change this one to 1. which means I'm going to times and divide. So every 15 millimeters on the diagram was only one in the real world. So this would mean my real life object is smaller than my diagram. Okay, a bedroom has a width of 12 and a half feet. On the diagram, it was 18.75 inches. Same problem here, feet, inches. What do we want to change? I think I would change this to inches. Okay. So maybe this one you'll want to get familiar with, but I think we might use this quite often. So feet, you got 12 inches in a foot. So I'm going to 12, times that by 12. So that is 150 inches. Okay, so we need a diagram to the real. So on the diagram, we had 18.75, and that was 150 in the real life. So we always want one of the sides to be one. So let's make the smaller side one. So 150 divided by, so you'll always do the big divided by the small. So the scale is 1 to 8. So every 1 on the diagram is 8 in real life. So the real life thing is bigger this time. Okay, the thickness of a coin is 1.8. Um, in the diagram, they used a scale factor of 50 to draw it in centimeters. What's the new dimension of the drawing? Okay. So we're going to times it by 50, because that was the scale that they used. So they drew it 50 times larger than it is. <clears throat> but they wanted to draw it in centimeters. So now how do I just change that number to centimeters? Does anybody know the idea of changing a millimeter back to a centimeter? We should have to divide by 10. So on your drawing, you're going to draw it 9 centimeters. OK. So a bedroom in real life was 9 feet. And there was a scale of 0.1 used to draw it. So I'm going to draw it at a scale of 0.1, right? Because I can't fit nine feet on a piece of paper. So on my drawing, so now that I have a paper, I'm gonna do a 0.9 foot on a paper, but I would like to actually convert that to inches when I draw. So how do I convert feet to inches? I'm going to times it by 12. Okay, so on your drawing, 
your bedroom is going to be 12 point or 10.8 inches. Okay, you have a bedroom, you drew it, this is your drawing. Okay, so when we did this, we used a scale factor of 0.2. So we took the real life and we times it by 0.2 and that's what we did on the diagram. I don't know, does that make sense? We took whatever we had in real, we would have times it by 0.2 and that's how we drew our diagram. Okay, so that's what I did up there. This is real life and then that was the diagram. Okay, so does this make sense to figure out what the real life is? I'm going to get the diagram and actually divide it by 0 0.2. Does that make sense? Because it's the opposite of doing that one. This times that, so this divided by that will get me back to that. So can you take those numbers and divide them by 0.2? Okay, now here's something a little bit tricky that we haven't done yet. I want to know how many feet, comma, inches that would be, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 75 and divide it by 12. So there's 6 feet, okay? 6 times 12 is 72 inches. So how many inches are left over after 72? Three inches. Okay, so same thing on the other side. 80 divided by 12. So that is six feet. Six times 12 is 72 inches. So how many left for 80? eight inches. Okay, you have a bedroom or some kind of room that measures 20 by 18 feet. You're going to have to try to get that drawn onto a piece of paper. So 11 inches by eight and a half inches. So do you see that I lined up the big sides with each other and the smaller sides with each other? So I did that on purpose. Okay, so this was feet and this is inches. So I'm gonna just times these numbers by 12. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to divide, so I'm gonna go 240 divided by 11, and I get 21.8. So I would have to reduce that by 21.8. 216 divided by eight and a half is 25.4. 
So I would have to reduce that by 25.4. So to fit this on the paper, you actually have to shrink it by something more. So you're, you can pick 26 would work, or 30 would work. So we could, we could do a reduce it by 26. Okay, but I gotta write this as a scale factor. So diagram to real. So every one on the diagram would be 26 in real life. Okay, so the important thing is to think about when you're making that reduction, right? You gotta pick a number that's bigger Okay, because if I picked 24, this would fit on the page, but this one would not fit onto my page. All right, some area stuff I think is next. Okay, so we have a 8 by 12 inch picture frame. And the scale factor is that those sides get tripled so what's going to be the change in my area? My area is not going to triple. You remember how to do this? Your area, your area is going to go nine times bigger. Okay, so 12 times 8. So the area of this is 96. 96 times 9. That's going to be my new area. Okay, and if you don't believe me, what if I did triple the sides? So if I tripled the sides, do you realize that this would be 36 by 24? Does that make sense? If I tripled this, and if I tripled that, does that times that come out to be the same as we got? So it should, 36 times 24, okay. Chad and Charlene painted a mural on the wall. So here's the dimensions using an overhead projector. If the original sketch had an area of that, what is the scale factor? Okay, so what's the area? You know what? We need to do this in inches though, because this one was in inches. So I'm going to go times 12 before I even do that. So 144 inches by 96 inches. So I made that into inches. So the area of this rectangle is 144 times 96, 13824. Okay, so I'm going to take this area divided by this area. So how did the area 
change. The area changed by 64 times the size. So tell me, what was the scale factor? How did the sides change? So what am I going to have to do? I have to square root that. So the sides are changing by 8. Okay, <clears throat> 13, a circle has a diameter of 56, and then it's reduced to 7. Determine the scale factor for the area. Okay, so on this one, you need to understand that I'm reducing something. So our scale factor is going to be a decimal, right, when you reduce something. Okay, so new divided by original. So I'm going to be doing that because it's a reduction. The new divided by original. 0.125. So that is the scale factor of how the sides changed. So what is the change in the area? I'm going to take that, I'm going to square it. Okay, <clears throat> number 14. This is the first rectangle and then this is the second one. So new divided by original. The new one divided by the original. So obviously I reduced it because I had a 900 and then I went to 10, so it's a reduction. So that's how the area, that was the area changing, right? How did the sides change then? So what do I have to do from area to sides? I need to square root that number. So square root. Okay, so we just need to make careful, like knowing that something is reducing to make sure we go the proper way. Always kind of this idea, new divided by original. Okay, a water bottle is 16 ounces. For the drawing, a scale factor of 0.4 was used for the dimensions. So what's the volume of the diagram? Okay, so this was the scale factor for the sides. <clears throat> so this is a volume question. So what am I going to do to get a scale factor for volume? I'm going to use 0.4 cubed. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to take my original 16 and I'm going to times it by 0.4 cubed because the original volume was 16 and then I was reducing it. So 16 times 0.4 cubed means the diagram volume would be 1.024. Okay, so that was real life, and then the diagram, it will be a smaller volume. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, the volume of the first, here's the volume of the second. So new divided by the original. I think we're all in centimeters cubed, so that's good. That was the new volume divided by the original volume. So that is the scale factor for the change of the volume. So what did I want? I want the sides. How do the sides change? So I'm going to take that number and I'm going to, do you remember this button? Cubed root it. So for me, I have a button like this on my calculator, the any root. So I have to go three, any root, and then of that value, so 1.4. The scale factor of how the sides changed is 1.4. Okay. Jason's drawing a circular pool. The pool has a volume of that. The volume of the diagram is this which should have a cube on it, not a squared. Okay, what scale factor was used? Okay, so first of all, we need to convert here. This is in feet cubed and this is in inches cubed. So this is just a conversion. So how many inches cubed is that? Okay, so now I'm going to write down that one foot cubed equals 12 cubed. Okay, so if one foot is 12 inches, one cubic foot is 12 cubic inches. Okay, so I'm doing this times 12 cubed. So that's the volume of the pool in real life. And then here's the volume of the diagram. So I'm going to divide that and I'm getting a hundred. Okay, so that was me dividing volumes. So that's the scale factor of the volumes. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cube root it. So 
So once I do that, that's going to be the scale factor of the sides. And let's say that maybe your final answer, I wanted you to write it as a scale. So remember, we always do diagram to real. So every one on the diagram, every one inch on the diagram is 4.64 inches in real life on the sides, like the di diameter of the pool, etc. <clears throat>